Wednesday to you, and uh, thank you for tuning in this morning, or maybe it's even afternoon in your world, uh, but thanks for being a part of our morning devotions, and Pastor Mark and I's desire is to stay connected with uh, you, whether you're a part of Orchard or uh, some of our friends that live in Florida or Alaska or Africa, uh, many people tuning in from all over the world. And today, I want to go to the heart of the issue, the heart. And uh, I want to kind of talk about the Genesis passage, but uh, also the Matthew passage, but also the James passage. And uh, we're going to tie these together and just encourage you. We have uh, here at Orchard the last three Sundays have been looking at emotions and how they play a part in our life. And last Sunday, if you were not tuned into that, we looked at uh, the sinful nature that you and I have, uh, the flesh, and how they spin our emotions to deceive us. But we also have an outside enemy, uh, the devil himself and his minions, and they spin our emotions uh, to play against us and to deceive us as well. And so through these passages that we've been looking at, it uh, brought me to this today to just be a reminder of how deceitful our heart is, is what Jeremiah said. Uh, desperately wicked, and even he says, who can know it? Um, none of us have the ability to genuinely know the depths of the ugliness of our own heart, the potential that our heart has to do wicked things. And so I take you to Matthew chapter 16, and especially verse 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, the understanding that we are willing to give up eternity. We are given, willing to give up God's everlasting joy and blessings in our life for something as in the Old Testament, a bowl of lentil soup. And it takes me back to the Genesis passage. You know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we know that man was created and then all these other things were created. But if we understand the, the source and the base for this is that God was at the center of the garden. He was at the center of the soul. He was the item to be worshipped. And what happened with the deception, there it is, deception, that Satan came to Adam and Eve and said, this fruit on this tree will make you wise, it'll make you knowledgeable, it'll make you like God. And so through that deception, their eyes were turned off of the throne of their heart where God was to something external. It was something outside of the realm that God had created for their benefit, but it was not to be worshipped. It was a desire of their heart to have something other than God. And so they chose the apple, the fruit, the disobedience, and that desire became the lust of their heart. It became the idol of their heart. It was what they were worshiping rather than God himself. And sadly, it's the same for us. God has given us all kinds of things. He's blessed us with things to enjoy, to be a part of our life, but never to worship. And it could be something materialistic, you know, like a hobby. Uh, it could be some boat, car, you know, some other thing. It could be money itself. It could be power or pride. You know, the list just goes. And those things become the idol of our heart. It becomes what is worshipped in our life. It's more important to us than God himself. And so I take you to the James chapter 1 passage. And in James chapter 1, as we look at this passage, uh, verse 15 really is where we're at. Uh, Verse 14 says, but each person is tempted when he is drawn away or lured and enticed. Boy, is that what Adam and Eve did? They were lured and enticed. So each person, you and I, James says, is tempted when we're lured and enticed by our own desires 
Then, when desire uh, has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So notice the progression. It starts with a luring and enticement. It gives birth to sin, and then it grows into ultimately death. You know, if, if you and I were to look at something, and let's just say we, we hold it in our hand, uh, whatever that idol is, uh, money, possessions, retirement, 401, grandchildren, uh, power, authority, recognition. I mean, just the list could go forever. If you held it in your hand and then you equated that to death, would you be willing to hold it so tightly? Would you be willing to make that the part, the idol of your heart? I don't think so. And so I ask the question, you know, how many possessions are in your house? Do you have too many things in your house? What about your garage, your collection? What about things that you hold dearly tightly to? See, things that God has given us are never meant to be the idol of our heart. And when we hold on to or collect too many things, then it's easy for them to transition from uh, luring us to desire, which ultimately could be sin, not in the possession, but in the control of too many possessions that take the place of God in our heart. You know, God desires to be number one in our life. He desires to gain our attention and our, uh, everything that we have. And so uh, today this is a, a little delicate because I feel like we're, you know, kind of putting down, you know, grandchildren or putting down having possessions. And, and that's not the point at all. It's what has become the idol of your heart and what the danger of that is. And so what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That could be someone losing their soul for salvation or for a follower of Jesus Christ, it could be losing the soul of joy and uh, the worship to the Lord because things or possessions or powers have become an idol of our heart. So I want you to have a good Wednesday. Think about this. Let God reveal as, as the psalmist, David, you know, God search me and know me and show me if there's anything in my heart that should not be there. Have a great Wednesday.